Longtime viewers of this channel will probably know that besides like Yu-Gi-Oh! and anime like that, one of my favorite series to talk about is Shokugeki no Soma aka Food Wars. This is a series that ranks among my all-time favorites. And to be honest, if you told me this when this show first came out, I wouldn't have believed you. When season one of Food Wars came out, I had zero interest in watching it. It just seemed like some etchy comedy with a food theme to it. And I, at the time, and even still today, don't always like to go for etchies. But when season two came out, I decided to see what all the hubbub was, and I decided to check it out and was instantly hooked. I genuinely believe Food Wars, even if you don't notice it at first, has one of the tightest, most well put together scripts in anime history. Everything from the characters to the storylines to the animation just feels like it's done so perfectly to a T. It ranks among, in my opinion, one of the all time greats which makes it such a sad disappointment to see that its final season season five goes out with such a whimper like no one was talking about this and the few who were not positively how did it get this bad? This was a show that, like, not even six months ago when, like, the second half of its fourth season came out, everyone was talking about it. Everyone was still excited. Everyone was still hyped. Yet somehow, in the blink of an eye, this once titan of awesome anime titties and shonen tournaments and food presentation was just out of the public consciousness. Well... I should probably start off by saying a big factor of it was COVID. Uh, Food Wars' final season was one of the anime that got put on hiatus after only being on for a few episodes, so I feel like it kind of just got summed up with that group of shows, and I feel like that kind of followed it when it eventually came back out again. It also didn't help it was going against one of the biggest animes of the year, ReZero, as well as several other anime that are being remembered as some of the more popular ones of the year. So competition was stiff, and I do think that is a big factor here. But it's not the biggest factor. As much as it pains me to say it, as much as I've spent like six months trying, well, less than that, some period of time trying to figure out how to articulate my final thoughts for the Food Wars anime. There really is no other way to say it than Food Wars' final season is just not very good. And that's what we're here to talk about today, to talk about how something so good could fall so somewhat quickly um, and so obviously, like, no one is really defending season five here. So yeah, let's get started right where things went wrong, and that is, in many people's eyes, with the previous arc. So, many people actually started losing their interest in Food Wars the minute the show had a plot. The minute there was a big shonen style villain that they had to fight and use the power of food and friendship to save the day, this lost people. And I'd be lying if I said I couldn't understand where the problem was. Previously, Food Wars went out of its way to subvert expectations in that respect. Many people assume going into a cooking anime that it will just be a shonen except replace fighting with food. That it would literally just be cooking Yu-Gi-Oh, essentially, is what you would have had. That there'd be a big baddie that the power of food would have to stop, but it never did that. It would even go out of its way to introduce characters who would seem like they would be villains, only for you then to, re to realize that, no, these people are just as passionate and intense and intelligent as our heroes. They might just be a little misguided in how they act around other people, which... Our main characters also kind of are. It kept everyone relatable, it kept everyone likable, and it kept everyone fun. Now we've got a genuine baddie who has a crazy convoluted plan for taking over the restaurant industry, and he's got like an army of beautiful fetish teenagers who have helped him do so because teenagers are allowed to have control over a school board and like it's up to this big epic tournament where the power of food is the only thing stopping the main bad guy from bribing people to just say he wins and yeah it is 
kind of a betrayal. It is kind of going against the point of Food Wars. I, however, will still defend season four. There's still a lot of great moments, a lot of great uh, cooking, a lot of nice uh, fan service. And most importantly, I feel that the show's sort of commentary on the restaurant industry and a lot of talkings about the greater world of food and all that, I think are still present. So even though I acknowledge that season four uh, or the second to last arc is where things start to fall apart, I do still personally really like it. But going into this final arc, it is just, like, dead on arrival. Well, the final, the first, like, two episodes where they're at the beach and we get to look at all those beautiful titties, uh, those final two episodes, it might as well be the series finale. Uh, it's a good, cute final, like, thing. You can make the argument, it even kind of fits in with a nice final, like, wrap-up arc. Everyone's gotta learn to work together, put their egos and competitive edge aside to complete a task. It's a really fun final two episodes. Unfortunately, it keeps going, and we are introduced to the first big problem with this final season, and that being the villains. Now, let me explain to you the villains of the previous season. The villains of the previous se season consist of one of Arena's abusive parents, there's a pale pretty boy with food superpowers who has a uh, tough chick dominatrix sidekick, as well as several dozen gimmicky characters of different uh, fetishes and actors. And also, oh yeah, uh, one of these characters has a somewhat convoluted connection to Soma's dad. What is the plot to this new arc? You have one of Arena's abusive parents, you have a pale pretty boy with food superpowers, and someone's got a connection, a convoluted connection to Soma's dad. Starting to see the problem here? Yeah, they just kind of repeat everything from the previous arc, and a lot of the little moments of like, what is the greater meaning here are exactly the same. It's once again based on getting Edina to fix her relationship with an abused parent. It is once again about everyone having to come together and push aside their egos. It's just a lot of the same stuff we had already got. Many people, myself included, believe that we should have just ended at the end of the last arc, and it even sets itself up to be the end until the last five seconds. It genuinely feels like this was when Food Wars became a huge franchise and had to keep going just a little bit longer to squeeze out those last few dollars. Unfortunately, though, it isn't just the plot and the new characters that are a big problem here. A big part of this final season that's bad is the cooking, the main point of the show. One of the things that makes the cooking in Food Wars feel real and interesting is that it uses real world techniques. It uses ideas you could replicate. It makes it feel like you are being challenged when you watch it. Like, here's this thing you can do. Can you follow it? Maybe you can try yourself. And it has had an impact. There has been more interest in cooking in Japan because of Food Wars. Proving that if you try to present something as cool to people, they will go for it. Now in this final season, you have like people using chocolate cutting chainsaws and like weird finger claws and just all this shit that just feels like the dumb goofy stuff that would be in the version of Food Wars you assume it is before you go to watch it. Not what you actually get out of it. Because of this, I don't feel like any of the new characters are intelligent. I don't feel like they're doing anything I haven't seen before. I don't feel like I'm being challenged as an audience member. I just feel like I'm watching a big, dumb, goofy thing. And I feel like if I could have gotten over the recycled plot points if I at least still felt like I was somewhat being engaged as a viewer. <laughs> so yeah, that's all pretty bad. Uh, is there anything else that's really problematic here that's that big? Not really. Like, it's really only these two big things, but they're kind of big things. Shows like Food Wars that have very, like, weird concepts but go about them very intelligently need to always be on their game. They need to always be going for the most interesting executions and utilizing the most interesting ideas. Just ditching that for five minutes really is enough to kill a show, and that is exactly what happened here. Now, is this the worst thing ever? 
No. I think if you're looking for just a fun time watching an anime, you will get that here. There's still a lot of good comedy. There's still a lot of fun moments, just not particularly engaging ones. Some of my favorites include, like I said, the first two episodes. Uh, I really loved getting to see Megumi win something. I like the way that Soma and Aldini give up their competitive edge from it to just be happy for her. That's really nice. Uh, I like Soma and Aldini teaming up. That's kind of cool. The idea behind the villain's power is fucking stupid, but I think that at least gets shown off kind of interestingly. Some of Soma's new dishes are kind of neat. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Also, I hate the stupid everyone just gets undressed. You literally did that to end the last arc. <laughs> so yeah, no, this is just not very good, and it really is. Also, Soma never beats Edina. <laughs> I waited five seasons for Sona to beat Arina, and look, I get it, this whole thing turned into being about saving Arina, but I don't care. I wanted to see Soma shut her up. I wanted it, god damn it, and I never got it, and I never will, till the inevitable anime-only sequel where Soma's kid and Arina's kid uh, go up against each other. A Soma Arina shippers don't at me. Anyways... So yeah, that's it. This is one of my favorite animes of all time, and it has just a really lackluster conclusion. Does this affect my liking of the good seasons? No, it really doesn't. For starters, I'd known for a while before this final season premiere that the final arc was lackluster, and also it doesn't change what was really enjoyable about those older seasons. It's like when people complain about what happened with Game of Thrones. It do, Just because something gets bad or writers change or it drops the ball, it does not invalidate your experience when something was good. Now, it may make you know kind of awkward when you have to factor in the direction it goes when you're thinking about it or maybe you want to rewatch it, but the times I had enjoying Food Wars are mine to keep forever, and they're some of the most enjoyable times I had watching anime probably ever. When this show was good, it was fantastic. It genuinely kept me engaged, and it was one of the most enjoyable anime experiences I've ever had. And when it went bad, it felt bad because we expected more, because we knew this franchise was capable of more. Never be afraid to challenge the franchises you like to be better. So yeah, that was Food Wars Season 5, but did you like it? Did Season 4 lose you? Were you never on board with this idea for a show in the first place? Tell me about all that below, and as always, click to like, click to subscribe, and join me, because for the end of the year, we will of course count down the top 10 best and worst animes, and I'm telling you right now, Food Wars Season 5 probably won't be on either, but uh, come and join me for that end of the year fun.